there's a fine line between experimentation and being an idiot. Now we find ourselves directing it and performing it, and producing it. But just right now, pretend that you can just look next to you and see see where the sign is. And pretend like you're getting ready to play. Yeah, that's it. down at the end jump 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 boom boom so it's actually at the very end it's like boom Paul Stancato and I am a blue man in training my name is General Furman Judd Jr. and I'm also a blue man in training the goals get in his mouth first paintball of the evening it's just, it's hard. I, I just don't think it's an in, inescapably hard thing to do to just get in there and catch it. Because I mean, it's all on you, man. You set up the, you set it up, man. You set up, are they gonna, do they catch these things or do they miss and them? Just, and they drill you and drill you and drill you and drill you. And it, you just reach this place inside. And, you know, everything, the outside world is shut off. And you're in that moment. And, and I guess that's what they need to see. Watch your heights. Watch what he's doing. Multiple reproductions can be made. This has raised some concerns about forgery and other kinds of artistic fraud, sensitive topics ever since the Millie Vanilli crisis. But most experts agree that the benefits of digital reproduction far outweigh the potential abuses. And once we go inside this digital world ourselves, it is possible to have an enhanced experience of art, unencumbered by the limitations of the physical world. For example, we can now put our own personal stamp on the art we visit, changing it slightly to suit our own tastes. We can also bring static works of art to life, freeing them from their otherwise emotionless states. Um. Ironically or paradoxically, we wear a mask, but it's really a way of, of liberating ourselves from our cultural mask. I mean, the question is, are we putting a mask over when we put on the blue character? Or are we really pulling, peeling this off? I feel like a blue man learning the music and, and the whole process and watching the guys that are in the show now. It's, it's an ongoing process and, and being trained by, by these guys it's just just the layers that that we have to put on it to become a, a blue man it's not that you just get blue and you learn the music and and you learn whatever but it's a a long process to to become a blue man as you know most people could look at the show and and there's so much going on maybe the audience will get it or maybe they don't get it but we as performers have to get it and have to know what's going on psychologically um, i don't know if this gets too like intellectual but we, we kind of use this uh, almost a Freudian model we're not like Freudian thinkers in any way but you know but it, we, we pulled from it this idea of the superego the ego and the id and we've taken it uh, to be like um, the uh, superego is hero the ego is is the ordinary uh, the, uh, the person in his ordinary life uh, with the kinds of um, cultural mask and uh, um, uh, idiosyncrasies that we learn in our lifetime. And the id is, a, is the clown or like an animal. So we think of Blue Man as 
the top and the bottom, the superego and the id, or the hero and the clown, smashed together without the 70 odd years that we live with all of the habits that we develop, the uh, um, pathologies or the you know, um, neurosis and stuff like that. All of our work starts with this idea that, that from the day we are aware that there's a culture larger than ourselves, we begin that process of acculturation, which is really the process of building a mask for ourselves which is really the end of authenticity, really. It's the beginning of manipulating one's self, being, being one's own God, you know, creating the impression that other people have of you. And um, I guess our belief is that art, among other things, can offer a glimpse back, you know, peek underneath the mask or remind people of that area of the mask.